Welcome to the Words to Empower television broadcast featuring Frank and Jackie Stewart, pastor and first lady of the Acts Ministries. And now, Frank and Jackie Stewart. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for joining us and today we have something special planned for you. We want to share with you our 30th annual Winning Women Warriors Conference where God met us here and he blessed us tremendously as we had a virtual conference online. Today we want to share a segment and some highlights from our night service with our guest speaker, Dr. Janice Showstrand. And this year, our women had pledges of $75 in our scholarship donations that we're asking you to join us with as God blessed us. And as he has blessed each and every one of us, we're asking you to contribute and be a blessing to both the women's ministry and our students this year. We're going to jump right into a segment of our night service with Dr. Janice Showstrand of Newark, Ohio. So be blessed by this word. Praise the Lord, saints. It's so good to be with Suffragan Bishop Stewart and First Lady Jacqueline Stewart and the Axe Congregation. The Lord bless you. I am delighted to be with you this evening, albeit in another state at another time. But I believe the Lord has gathered us together for such a time as this. And I believe the Lord has given us a word to help us to deploy. I know the theme of your conference is we have go out and we've been deployed and that your main scripture comes from Luke where Jesus told the story of the king who sent his servants to bid people who were in society. And one said, I can't come to your son's wedding because uh, I bought a piece of property. And another one said, I just got married. And another one said, I've got oxen. These were people that had money and had education and were prosperous. And the king was so angry when all these people came back with excuses that he turned to his servants and said, just go out into the highways, the byways and the hedges and make people come in that my house may be full. And that's the main theme of this conference. Go. And, and then there is a backstory, an understory that has to do with the book of Samuel. 1 Samuel chapter 14 verses 1 through 16. And I can't be with you, but the word of the Lord is with you even now. And before we begin reading this, I just want to tell you the story. You can leave that scripture up there. In the 13th chapter... King Saul had been king for about two years. And during that time, he had begun resisting the Philistines who kept his people in oppression and fear. In fact, they didn't even allow those people to have a smith. You know what a smith is. It's the man that forges iron because that's how you make weapons. You make blades in a fire and you hammer and sharpen. And the Bible said that the Philistines would not let them have a smith because they didn't want the Israelites to rebel against them. So they took away their ability to create weapons. They didn't have any weapons, so you can't fight a war. Well, when Saul became king, the Lord moved on him to move against those oppressors. And we see that in that 13th chapter, Saul had gathered to himself 2,000 men, and Jonathan had 1,000 under their command. Now, I don't know when Jonathan did it, how he did it. I, I can think why he did it. He was probably a little bit rasher than Saul, and he was a courageous man. But Jonathan slew, one version says a garrison, another says he slew a governor, and it enraged the Philistines. So they got together, I think it was 30,000 chariots, and then they got infantry. That means the guys that are walking. 30,000 chariots and a bunch of guys walking and said, we're going to crush them. We're, we've raided them. We've wiped them out. But they resisted us one time, and we're coming after them. We're coming after them. They resisted us 
and we're coming after them. Have you ever felt like when you get up to make a push to be closer to God that you find resistance coming at you and then right after that it feels like the, the floor falls out and the ceiling drops in and that's exactly what happened to them. It was like we'll teach you to resist us because we're going to pound you to the ground. And in that context Samuel told Saul wait for me Seven days I'll be there. You got to wait for me. I'm going to help you sacrifice and wait for me. Well, guess what was happening to the army when they saw 30,000 chariots, infantry coming down in the valley of Michmash. They got scared. And while Saul was waiting for Samuel, he was watching his soldiers dropping out. So the number he started with was not the number that he finished with. And by the time we get to the 14th chapter, where our text is, there were 300 men left out of 3,000. That was it. Or, excuse me, 600. 600 out of 3,000 men were left. That means that four-fifths left and one out of five stayed. That's it. That's not a great number. And so Saul got so worried about people leaving that he crossed a line. He said, I'll just do the sacrifice myself. I can't wait for Samuel. I'm losing my army. You know the songs that say, wait on the Lord? And the scripture that says, wait on the Lord? That was a test because God knew that Israel was never going to be strong enough to take the Philistines by themselves. He didn't intend for them to fight a typical warfare. Everybody say, he never intended, he never intended. A, typical a typical warfare. And if you number God's people, 15 million of Semitic origin from Abraham in a world of what, 6 billion? It's an infinitesimal amount in comparison to the world population. God has never wanted us to be number conscious when it came to getting the victory. I know it's hard to say because we need more money, we need more resources, we, we count. And we count on being able to count, but not in God's economy. So Saul forced himself to sacrifice and Samuel said, you shouldn't have done it, you should have waited on me. So Saul had a breakdown between him and God. But Jonathan didn't. Now, I could preach about that for a long time. Saul was a leader who left his commitment to God, but his son did not. Now, this is what's amazing. By chapter 14, only 600 men are left. Now, let's go to verse 1. I have a lengthy reading, and I want you to just listen. Now it came to pass upon a day that Jonathan the son of Saul said to the young man that bare his armor, Come and let us go over to the Philistines garrison that's on the other side. But he didn't tell his dad. I want to jump down to verse 4. And between the passages by which Jonathan sought to go over unto the Philistines' garrison, there was a sharp rock on one side and a sharp rock on the other side. And the name of one was Bozes and the name of the other was Senna. Jonathan was getting ready to go into a conflict in a narrow place. Sharp rocks on one side and sharp rocks on the other. I want to tell you something. There is no greener grass on the other side right now. If you decide that you want to escape the conflict we're in by changing your direction, I'm telling you, if you join the enemy, you're going to be defeated. If you go back to the life you left, you're going down in misery. You're just going to have to go forward and have faith in God. And even though Jonathan's father didn't have it, Jonathan did. Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. My name is Frank Stewart. I'm the pastor of Acts Ministries in Conway and also in North Little Rock. We also have an outreach on John Barrow where we partnership with the city and other ministries there. I want to invite you to partner with us in this ministry. I want to invite you to share with us in propagating the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are many things that we're doing and we're going to continue to do. We have a vision in mind on how to be a blessing to the communi communities that we're in. So we're asking.
asking you to be a partner with us. I believe that God will reward you and he will multiply you. So join us in the Acts ministry in sponsoring not only this broadcast, but what we're doing in the great city of Little Rock, North Little Rock, and also Conway. God bless you. Let me tell you who's saying all this. I am the God of all the flesh that loves me, the flesh that hates me. He said, I created all of it. Elephant flesh, whale flesh, cow flesh, chicken flesh. I am the God of all. Is there anything? too hard for me. See, we get, we get linear thinking. Yeah. It's got to be this way yeah. or no way. I don't want to survive that. I don't want to go through that. I, I got to have my people around me. I won't make it without them. And he said, really? I can take you through that, bring you on the other side with joy and peace and righteousness and goodness. I can do a greater miracle than bringing your relative back to you. I can keep you after they're gone. Not only that, I can keep you until I sound a trumpet and come and get you. I can reunite you with your relative. Is there anything too hard for me? I know where everybody is that has ever lived. And then there was Gideon who fought with a small army of 300. They didn't have any swords either. They had pitchers of clay, lamps, and trumpets. And that's how they won about. And the Lord said, you've got 20,000, cut them down. Cut them down again, cut them down again, because I don't want any of you saying it was because you were so awesome that you won. No, I'm going to do this myself and show you what I can do with people that just believe me. Verse 7 of 1 Samuel 14, let's go back to that. I want to show you what his armor bearer said. Now I want to tell you something. If you're going to march against what's troubling you, you can't go by yourself. Jesus sent out his disciples by twos. And Jesus said, you got to get somebody to agree with you. And his armor bearer was the guy that helped him carry his burdens. Do you know what Jesus said through his disciples and apostles? Bear ye one another's burdens. And so fulfill the law of Christ. He said, I want you to feel one another's pain. I want you to pray for each other. I want you to be concerned about what's going on in that home. I want you to help carry it. Not conceal it. This is not conceal carry. This is carry carry. Because what happens when you start carrying each other's burdens is it turns into weapons. Because when you begin to love one another, suddenly your weapons are not carnal but mighty through God because you start speaking truth to thoughts and truth to feelings. But if you're sitting there lying about how you feel and you won't tell the truth about where you are, then nobody can argue the point with you. But when somebody loves you and you tell them the truth, I'm just Courage. I'm suffering. I'm struggling. And they pick that burden up and say, is there anything too hard for God? You know he's never left us. He's never going to forsake us. You have an armor bearer. If you want someone to demoralize you, go find somebody that will agree with you about how bad it is and how hard it is and how awful it is and how weak you are and how miserable you are and you won't lift a finger when the Philistines come. But if you've got an armor bearer, then there's going to be somebody who's going to help you use the sword of the Spirit. You're not going to be able to go after people that flip you off and tell you where to go when you're driving, but you can go against the spirit of rage by saying God has not given us the spirit of fear but power you can bless them that curse you and love them that hate you and do good to them that despitefully use you what are you doing we are marching oh lift your hands and let's praise the Lord
Armor bearer said, I don't want to fast and pray. Go find somebody else to do that. You know what that boy said to him? He didn't say, well, man, there are only two of us. Jesus said, if two of you get in agreement, one goes, shall we take, you, you want to help me fast and pray for my family and I'll help fast and pray for yours? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. One of them says, man, I've been really discouraged. I got some things I'm not, I'm not handling well. You know, I do too. Let's fight it together. I got me an accountability partner, someone I don't like to, someone I tell the truth to. Man, I'm struggling. Okay, let's pray about that. Let's fight that together. Let's, let's move, not hiding that away. Well, I don't want anybody to know that I'm really not battle worthy. You know, oh God, please, don't tell me your legs are broken when we're getting ready to go fight. Yes. You need to be well. Yes. Yes. You're no good to us if you're not strong, if you're sick and weakly. And you hadn't been dealing with stuff. His armor bearer said, do all that's in your heart. Turn. I'm with you. I looked up armor bearer. He's a burden bearer. He's a strengthener. He's an uplifter. Say, I don't have one like that. You better find you somebody that will tell you the truth to your pain instead of telling you to escape it. You better find somebody that will look your depression in the eye and say, that ain't Jesus. We need to get to church. We need to pray. You need somebody that will look you in the face and say, where you been? What are you doing? Come on, let's get back in the house of the Lord. I don't go down the front. Come with me. Why? I'm your armor bearer. I'm your strengthener. We're getting ready to fight for your family, for your peace, for your health, for your joy. The Lord is coming. I'm your armor bearer. Do what you want to do. I'm with you. Yes. Jesus said, if two of you agree on earth, is it touching anything? In Matthew 18, 19, anything you ask. If you ask me for strength, I'll give it to you. If you've been suffering from discouragement, I'll give you joy. Renew what we're praying for. We're praying for other people. We forget to pray for ourselves. Lord, restore my joy. Lord, restore my strength. Lord, renew my mind. These are prayers God wants us to pray. Right here. Right here, you need an armor bearer. You need somebody that will pray with you and for you. Then verse 8 of 1 Samuel 14, and I'm hurrying to my conclusion here. Jonathan said, we'll pass over to these men and we'll reveal ourselves. Now, I'm tell you talk about courage. Clearly, the other side didn't have any arrows. Because I want to tell you what happened when the army melted away and all those chariots came down in that valley. The Israelite men went into caves and holes. There were no women there. But the men were so petrified because they didn't have any weapons. Forgot completely about God. They were looking for things they could use with their hands. They weren't connected. Do you understand me? Right. They were, but look at their leader. Their leader wasn't following, so they were just scattered. They were doing exactly what he did, trying to escape, trying to run, except he had a boy. I don't know what God will do, but let's give it a shot. Wow. Oh, God, give us some Jonathans. He said, we're going to reveal ourselves. They came through those rocks. Now, before he did it, let's go to the next verse. He said, we're going to show ourselves to him. He said, I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. And if they say to us, hey, stay right there until we come to you. We're coming down. We're coming after you, little boys. He said, we'll just stand our ground. And we won't go up. He said, we won't run. We'll just stand and see. Have you ever heard, stand still? So he was prepared to use two forms of defense and offense. One was, I'm not moving. And the other one said, I'm just waiting for go. He said, I know what to do. If they say, we're coming down, buddy, we're going to show you a thing or two. Then he said, I'm just going to stand here and I'm going to see the next thing that happens. He didn't even know what the next thing would be. He just said, we're not moving, we're going to stay. But then he said this. 
he, he said some things. They agreed on some things that gave God permission to move. Because look what he said. He said, verse 10, if they say, come up to us. Ever seen that? That little move right there? As in, bring it. He said, we are going up. Because that means the Lord is going to let us smash them to the ground. Now, is that nuts or what? He was spoiling for a fight. Yeah. He said, I want to fight them, but I don't want to fight them without God. Amen. That's the key. I'm willing to fight. Oh, yes, sir, I will fight. We'll fast, we'll pray, we'll stomp, we'll jump, we'll dance, we'll shout, we'll knock doors. But I want to make sure that the Lord has said, go. So he said, if they say, bring it, he said, we are coming up. All right. So I, he said, the Lord has delivered them. It'll be assigned to us. So here they go. And verse 12, they climbed up, Jonathan and the men of the garrison answered Jonathan and his armor bearer. See, Jonathan's talking, look, they see us. Now, if they say, we're coming down, don't move. But if they say, come up, buddy, God is said, go. And so the men of the garrison said, come up to us and we're going to show you a thing or two. You talk about flipping somebody off. <laughs> Children. Children, that's what this was right here. Come on, little boy. And Jonathan said to his armor bearer, he didn't say, go ahead of me. He said, come after me. The Lord has delivered them into the hand of who? Who did he say? Whose hand? He didn't say, into my hand. I'm going to tell you something. Every time you conquer your Philistine, you're conquering for the whole church. Every time you overcome what's been overcoming you, you're winning a victory for all of us. We need you to fight. You say, well, nobody knows what I'm doing. God knows what you're doing. You got to whip it so we can all win with you. Hallelujah. God is doing say well no one will know God knows when you conquer the thing that's been conquering you and you get an agreement with somebody you're going to release victory throughout the whole camp you say I don't believe it I'm going to prove it to you Jonathan said come up verse 13 Jonathan climbed on his hands and on his feet he was going vertical. I'm telling you, when you climb up, you're going to find yourself on your knees. You're going to do some praying and some fasting and some crying out to God. And the Bible said he led the way and his armor bearer came after him. And they fell before Jonathan. That boy gave him whatever it was Jonathan had. And his armor bearer slew after him. I read one version that said his armor bearer had rocks. While Jonathan was swinging a sword, you say, what is it? He's my rock. He's my sword. He's my shield. You fight with the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost and the name of Jesus and the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. What are you doing? I'm going against the Philistines in the name of Jesus. Oh, shout to the Lord. Verse 14 said, and that first slaughter the first one with Jonathan and his armor bearer made was 20 men. Two to 20. Within a half acre of land which a yoke of oxen might plow. They were well, wasn't that good for them. There were 14,000 infantrymen and 30,000 chariots. What good did their little old victory do? Well, just go with me then to verse 15. And stand to your feet. And we're going to read it together. 
Because God sees the work we're doing. And God sees the battle we're fighting. And God notices when his people gather together. And I want you to read with me what happened when God saw that servant and that prince willing to lay down their lives for a victory no matter how small it was. And it was little. It was just like the man and the starfish where millions have washed up on the shore and that man walks and picks up this one and that one and the little boy says you won't save them all you're not going to make a difference but he said I will make a difference to this one and when you conquer what's been conquering you you are making a difference to someone in your family in your church in your community in your life it's time to fight your Philistine yes I'm telling you right now, it is time to fight your Philistine. Fear, doubt, anxiety, depression, discouragement, I don't care what it is, you, it's time to fight. Put on your camouflage. Shut up. I want you to read what happened after these boys killed 20 men. Two to 20, read with me. And there was trembling in the host. That means suddenly God began to do his thing. When we do ours, there was trembling in the host. And it went from the army. Let me tell you where else it went. It started like this. And they started... They started feeling something and a trembling came to the host. Read next. In the field, that means the ground began to tremble and then keep going. And among all the people, it started in the army. It went to the ground, then it went to all the people. Then it went to the garrison. Say it with me. The garrison. And guess who else it wound up with? The spoilers. You know who they are? They're the ones that would come by when the battle was finished and murder whoever was living but wounded. They're the ones that came by, those that could have been saved and ran them through with a sword. And God said, not today and not on my watch. There was a young man and an armor bearer and they agreed. They agreed. Yeah. Read the last part of that verse. And the earth quaked. So it was a very quake trembling. When you agree to worship with abandon. When you agree to fight without being ashamed. When you agree to give this thing everything you've got. God is going to shake this thing. Right now. Wow. Wasn't that awesome? Wasn't that anointed? Wasn't that powerful? I know you were tremendously blessed by um, those highlights from this year's Winning Women Warriors Conference. It's not too late to join the women and bless them with that $75 pledge or with your scholarship donation. We'd love to have you join us. We know that you have been blessed as well as we. And remember, you have come into the kingdom for such a time as this, and now you have been officially deployed. So come on out the camp. Have a blessed and wonderful week. And remember, you can always connect with us at WTEBroadcast at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. And we'd like to see you next week, same time, same station. God bless you is our prayer. Have a blessed and wonderful week. The Axe Ministries is located at 1423 Ingram in Conway and 1224 Franklin Street in North Little Rock. Call 501-329-2055 or go to axeministriesonline.org for more information.